Peace, peace. This your host, Selah Shalom, and this is the Cosmon Teachings in the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible, Owaspi, with another series of the wars against Jehovah. And the topic of discussion today is going to be called the rise of Anu Hasaj, who by treachery became Lord God's second in rank to true God, son of Jehovah. Now, it is this one angel in his administration that is responsible for these wars against Jehovah during this arc cycle. Now, in the book of wars against Jehovah, chapter 8, verse 1 through 19, it states, Jehovah spoke to God in Kreosheva, his heavenly place, saying, Behold, I have given great light to the earth and her heavens hundreds of years, and my gods and lords are becoming conceited in their own power and wisdom to rule in heavenly places. Verse 2. Now will I try them for a season by sending them a jay in darkness, for my gods and lords must learn to master the elements I have created in the fairment. Verse 3. So Jehovah brought the earth and her heavens into a dark region for a season. So here Jehovah is telling God concerning the heavenly government that his Lord gods and lords are becoming conceited in their wisdom and rulership in the heavenly kingdom. And Jehovah also stated that he will bring Aegean darkness in the heavens and the earth for a season, meaning that in the travel of the earth, there are regions where it is light and semi-light and darkness and semi-dark. And the earth travels through these regions of light and darkness. And when the earth is within these regions of light and darkness, it has an effect on humans on earth and the angels in the heavens. And these regions are stationed along the arc cycles of 3,000 years. And the season... As is stated, I will bring Ajayan darkness for a season is a time period of 400 years. So for 400 years, Jehovah will bring the heavens and the earth into these regions of darkness. So God, through Jehovah, has it mapped ahead of time on what will happen in the heavens and the earthly kingdoms. And the time period is from 3753 B.C. to 3353 B.C. Verse 4. Anu Hasaj, a one-time sub-god under Ahura, the false, was cast into hell and then delivered out of hell, whereupon he repented and became a faithless in heaven, serving many years in holy works in, in Alkin, a heavenly place of great wisdom. Verse 5, And it came to pass that Alkin was raised into a new heavenly place called Varapashana, and in the removing, behold, Ahura, ordered Anuhasaj from the line because of his inharmony, and Anuhasaj suffered himself to become angered. Verse 6. Satan, in parentheses, self, said unto Anuhasaj, Who art thou that one of less wisdom ordereth thee? Anuhasaj said, Alice, I am a fool, and without will to assert myself. Verse 7. For many years Anuhasaj became a wandering spirit in heaven, going from kingdom to kingdom doing nothing, and at times descending to the earth observing the kingdoms of the earth. So here it gives a brief history of the past about Enuhasaj's behavior in the heavenly government. Now keep in mind that this one angel who started this war against Jehovah were part of the original order of Jehovah's heavenly kingdom. Verse 8. Satan came again to him and said, Hear thou my voice, and thou shalt triumphant over all other gods. Enuhasaj said, what shall I do? And Satan said, Go thou to Ahura, who offended thee in presence of the chieftainess Sipin Armaj, and say to him, O God, I crave thee forgiveness, thou were right, and I was wrong. I have repented most bitterly. Now I come to thee with faith in Jehovah, whom will I serve forever. Turn me not off, O Ahura. Remember thy own one time shortness, and the high gods above thee accepted thee. Verse 9. Satan continued, Ahura will delight in thee, and take thee at thy word, and thou shalt enter Varapishana, asking for the lowest of places, practicing humility in all thy behavior. But be thou fruitful in making acquaintances with such as shall serve thee afterward. Verse 10. Satan continued, And whether it be fifty years, or a hundred years, or two hundred years, buy thou thy time. But the time shall surely come when thou shalt be exalted, and thou shalt solicit and accept a place in the dominions of the Lord God, in the Lordom of heaven and earth. Matrias. Verse 11. 
Satan continued, and whether it be 100 years more or 200 years, it matters not to thee, but thou shalt finally attend to the Lord him, and be duly installed and crowned Lord God of heaven and earth. Verse 12. And when thou art thus exalted, thou shalt seek to have appointed such lords to the ten divisions of the earth as thy own special friends. And it shall come to pass that the whole earth and her heaven shall be thine, and thy title shall be Lord God, and all the people on earth and in heaven shall be thy servant. So here Satan gives Enu Hasaj the blueprint of the takeover of the heavenly government on how to position himself to become Lord God, second in rank to true God, son of Jehovah. Verse 13. Enu Hasaj said, Thou art the wisest of gods, O Satan. All thou hast advised will I do. Neither shall any one in heaven or on earth know my design. Verse 14. And it came to pass in course of another 100 years, Enu Hasaj was promoted on the staff of the Lord God, the guardian, where he served the Lord God 170 years. So the Lord God named Enu Hasaj for his successor. Verse 15. So God came from Kriyoshiva and crowned Enu Hasaj, Lord God of heaven and earth, with great paganitry and display. God gave him a throne and placed him upon it. And from this time forth, Enu Hasaj was known and saluted as Lord God, which is the first rank below God. So Herod tells how Enu Hasaj connivingly become Lord God with his scheme undetected by God and any of the Lord Gods and Lords. So now Enu Hasaj is known as Lord God. Now we're going to move into how Enu Hasaj established the Lordom. Verse 16. The Lord God said unto Satan, Who first shall I bring into my favor? Satan said, Thou shalt first bring into thy favor Anuba, master of scales of heaven. And when thou has this to thy liking, thou shalt call him thy son and savior of men. So here Satan tells Enu Hasaj, or the Lord God, to bring Enuba to be part of his administration. And as I explained in the heavenly order and the rights of Enuba in that documentary, that Enuba was a title bestowed on the angel named Achangli. And Enuba means meditator and judge. And Satan told Enu Hasaj that he shall be called thy son, as in like son of God, savior of men. Now I'm showing the origin of these belief system we have stemming from this administration of angels. Verse 17. The Lord God said unto Satan, Who next shall I bring into my favor? Satan said, Thou shalt next bring into thy favor the ten lords of the heavenly kingdoms of the earth. And when thou hast them to thy liking, thou shalt exalt the chief one of them to be above the rest. And him that thou exaltest, thou shalt call Osiris for it is a name loved on the earth and in heaven. So here Satan inspires Enu Hasaj to bring the ten lords into his administration, and the chief ruler of the ten lords shall be called Osiris, a name favored in heaven and earth. Here the Osiris they're referring to is the Osiris I, who came in the 21st arc cycle after the creation of man, not the Osiris of Egypt. Now it is this Osiris of Egypt that took the name of Osiris the first. Verse 18, Satan said, Thou shalt reestablish thy lordom, and call it Horeb, and it shall be the central kingdom of all heavens belonging to the earth. Verse 19, And Anuba shall send the spirits of his department to thy heavens, and Osiris and all the other lords shall send the spirits of their department to thy kingdom. And in no case shall any more spirits be sent to Kriyoshiva. For all people in heaven and earth shall be taught that thy kingdom is the all highest place, and that thou art the all highest God, even the creator of all things. And all angels and mortals shall be thy servant. So here Satan inspires Enu Hasaj to bring all newborn spirits from Anuba's kingdom to his kingdom instead of God and his heavenly kingdom. And all those within Enu Hasaj's kingdom will look upon Enu Hasaj, or the Lord God, as the all highest God, and his kingdom as the all highest kingdom. Now here is where Enu Hasaj becomes false before Jehovah. Chapter 10, verse 14 through 18, it states, 
So after a session of three days, Enu Hasaj was elected and enthroned in Horeb, a new heavenly place, and crowned our God of earth and her heavens, the very Lord God in Jehovah. Thus he became a false god. Verse 15. 